Hey folks, this is Saint Jen. I'm here today in the city of Cali, Colombia. I have with me Alejandra. She is 21 years old. She is a professional dancer and dance instructor. Thank you for coming on to the show, Alejandra. Thank you, Sam, for having me here. I'm really happy and grateful to be part of this incredible show and share a little bit about myself with you guys. Can you tell us a little bit about your typical week here in Cali? Well, my week is a little bit crazy. I mean, I do a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm currently a student of social communication and journalism, so I also have to go to the university and have my classes. This is probably my last semester at the university, so I take a little bit more less classes than the other ones before, so I go to the university on Wednesday and Fridays, but I also have to go and take classes of my days and give classes to girls and also adults. Um, I don't know, probably the busiest day, it's Wednesday. So today, <laughs> because I have to travel again, like from one side of the of the city to the other one, I have to take classes, to give classes. I also have like um, in the nighttime, I have a preparation for something that it's called Miss to Universe Columbia, which I'm going to participate lately. I will share with you guys a little bit about it, but I have to practice for it. I'm taking classes, a bunch of stuff. And yeah, my life is pretty busy, but I try to determine like times for every single activity that I do during the week. At what time does your day start then? <laughs> well, I start the day really early. In fact, not every single day I start at the same time. I mean, if I have to give classes, like really in the morning, it would be like at around 8 a.m. So I wake up like one hour and a half before. But if I have to go to the university, I have class at 7 a.m. So I have to wake up like at 5.30 or 6 to get ready and go. And the Thursdays, it's the only day that I, on Thursdays, yeah, I don't wake up early. So I will wake up like at around 8 or 9 a.m. And even on Saturdays and on Sundays, I have to train myself really early. So yeah, it actually depends on the day if I started like at six, seven or eight a.m. Can you tell us a little bit about Miss Teen Universe Columbia? For sure, Miss Teen Universe Columbia, it's a contest that it's right here in Columbia for sure. We're preparing to be for the internationals. Right now I'm representing the city of Popayan, the white city of Columbia. As I told you before, I'm from Cali, but all my family, my mother's side, are from Popajan. So since I was small, I've been like all the time in Popajan because of my mom's side family. So I really love Popajan. It was the opportunity that life gave me a couple months ago. So I took it. I'm really happy. I'm excited. The contest will be um, in Babanquilla on June, um, like from the 17th or so. And yeah, I'm preparing for the contest because for sure it's hard. I mean, it's just a bunch of stuff. Um, I've never thought in my life I would be part of something like this. So for sure it has to be um, a rough road and I have to prepare myself for it, but I'm so happy and grateful for this opportunity that life gave me. I thought it was only a fashion competition. Is there more than that? It's a fashion competition, but in fact, it's a competition that integrates like a, bu a bunch of disciplines. So in my personal case, I mean, I never thought I would be part of a fashion competition as Miss Teen Universe Columbia. It's really similar like Miss Universe, but it's for teen people, teen girls as me. Um, but I'm like, I'm a dancer, so I want to take that culture into the contest. So for me, in, in my personal case, I know the other girls. I'm going to take the culture of Colombia, of my city, and my culture to the contest. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to, to dance, probably. I'm going to do some fashion shows there, but with dance integrated because I, I want to show my culture. I want to take that. And of course, I want to make my voice stand up for those that within culture that are there that can stand up for themselves. So when you were referring to your dancing about giving people voices, can you elaborate on that, please? For sure. Well, I mean, this opportunity that life gave me 
of being part of Miss Universe Colombia, it's something really big, you know? And not every single person can tell and can say, okay, I was part of the contest as a senior as Columbia. And in my personal case, I'm going to use this opportunity for cultural purposes. So all my life I've had like the dream, one of my biggest dreams is to be part of, of like a, a school dance, but create my own. So I want to create my own, but for sure with all those people that probably never thought they could be part of one, um, not just like in Colombia, but for sure in the city, which I'm representing that is full by dance. So I want to create a dance academy. I already have the name. In fact, <laughs> I've thought about this like literally all my life. And I think this is an incredible opportunity for me to start it, to start the, pro the, the process, the, the project, and for sure stand up for those cultural people and artists that are behind the scenes, but they have so much potential as myself and want to be part of this incredible opportunity as this one that right now I am. For the audience that are considering traveling to or moving to Colombia, does a smaller city like Copayán have anything to offer? <laughs> for sure. Well, Popayán, as you said, it's a really small city, but it's so cool that you feel like a family. I think that's what connects people there because everyone knows everyone literally because it's so small that you get to be part of it like family so you can go like i don't know on sunday morning to walk over the city i don't know have breakfast or something and then you just get to know so many people because everyone knows each other so you can go you can have fun with people you can travel inside popayan popayan is a very touristic city so in fact right now we're in Semana Santa, which is really important um, this this week in Popayán because it's really religious. So right now, there are a bunch of activities surrounded the religious aspect of Popayán. And in fact, many, many tourist people come to Popayán just for Semana Santa because it's an incredible, amazing opportunity for you guys to understand the history of Popayán, the history of Semana Santa, and what actually constructs and forms the city of Popayán. Is it any safer than Cali? It's safer. It's much safer than Cali. Um, I love Cali. I love my city. I'm from originals in Cali. But Popayán, it's much safer for sure. And what about the cost of living? The cost of living in Popayán, it's much cheaper than in Cali. I mean, Cali, it's not that high cost, but in, in Popayán, it's much more, much, much easier to accomplish living there. Are they going to be bored there? Ah. Well, I don't know if bored is the correct word to say, to, re like, to refer to Popayán, but it's a small city, you know? There are a bunch of activities to do there, but not as much as Bogotá, Cali, Medellin, which are more, much more easier to, to, to go to one place to another that refers to much more activities that you have like much more things to do. So you won't be bored, but it's probably more like a chill city, you know? If you like the adventurous part, if you want to be like going to one place to the other, the literally the craziest city, that's not for you because it's a much more calmer city. How did you become a professional dancer? Well, since I was small, I loved to dance. My mother is also a dancer. She's not a professional dancer, but she was also a dancer. She loved to dance. So I think that's probably why also I, I loved to dance since I was small. My mother taught me to dance. She was also dancing with me. And we both had so much fun since I was small. In fact, I actually, well, people say my mom says, that I started dancing when I was a baby because when I was, when she was pregnant, I wasn't really like really nice baby. I never moved. So the doctors thought I was literally dead all the time. So the only way to know if I was alive or dead was to put, to put music because they, when they put music, I started moving all the way. So that was like literally the solution. And that's why my mom says I started dancing since I was a baby. In America, we don't really have much of a dance culture. Do you have anything to say to my guys 
for now thinking about this for the first time and maybe <sighs> they're like in their 50s or 60s and they're like what is this okay for sure well i mean dance is for everyone including adults babies as i said i teach dance classes to little girls within the age of three four five six until 15 probably and then also i teach dance classes with um a method that it's called ballet fitness which is great and literally it's the best thing ever that it's ever happened to my life because you train yourself but at the same time you're dancing it's a mix of incredible um, methods so that that method i i give it to people to adults girls mostly girls in fact boys can also afford it but it's much more re related to the girls so i mean dance is for everyone you guys that are there dance dance your life like put your put music in your in your room and just start moving i mean it's not right or wrong but it's just amazing you can take classes you can search up i mean it's not the same as columbia because we dance a lot but probably I don't know, two streets away from your home, there's, there's classes, so you can search it up and dance because it's amazing. What about well, when we come here to Cali? Well, if you guys come here to Cali, for sure you can text me. I can give you dance classes. Um, I'm going to put probably my Instagram here. You can search myself and text me. I'm, I will be, it will be a pleasure for me to give you dance classes. You can go to Cali to a place that it's called La Topa Tolunda. It's like a disco club, but many tourist people go there just to learn how to dance salsa. So it's great because you're having fun and you're also learning how to dance. And in a, a lot of places you can go and train yourself and just have fun for a while. What is Strato is your family from? Well, my family is from the fifth one, straight Strato five. What life opportunities did that give you compared to someone that was in one, two, three, for example? Well, probably one of the biggest treasures I have right now, and I'm really grateful for it, for it, it's my English. I think my English, it's one of the treasures for myself right now and for my parents and all my family because they gave me the opportunity to study in a bilingual school, which not many people can afford it. And in fact, it was probably the best school in Cali. So since I was small, I learned how to speak English, write English, and all this stuff, and handle this incredible language um, really good. I think I have a really good, good level of English, and I really treasure my English because it opens me a bunch of doors. Right now, I'm learning French, and I hope to also handle French perfectly because I'm going straight off to, on July, to France. Any other ones come to mind? Major advantages? Well, yeah, major advantages right now I'm studying social communication and journalism in the best university of Cali, but like for my career, um, that it's the Autorma. I love, I love my career. I really love it. I'm really crazy. I love cameras. I love to talk. I love journalism. It's probably even the one I'm going to specialize journalism and sports journalism, including much more. And yeah, I'm probably. For sure, um, I'm sure that this is an incredible opportunity in the majors that much more people don't have. So with this interesting life that you already have here, is your hope to leave and live somewhere else or is it to stay? Well, right now, right now, I have so many plans attached to Colombia, especially the senior university of Colombia, so I can't live my my country right now but i would be really glad and it's one of my plans to live probably next year or in one or two years the country because i want to study abroad do my specialization in another country and for sure start working in and move it to a different culture i don't know which one i don't know which country but I know that for sure I don't want to stay here in my country. I love Colombia. I really do. It's an incredible country. But I mean, there are much more opportunities abroad. And for me, it's what I just like. And I have to really take those advantages. Have you traveled outside of Colombia yet? I've traveled outside of Colombia yet. I've visited, visited the U.S., Cuba, Republica Dominicana. I went also to... 
um, near the Caribbean Sea. I don't know the country because my I was really small and like my parents took me. But yeah, I had a couple opportunities to travel abroad. <laughs> of all the places you've traveled, have you noticed that the people in any one place have a much better quality of life than what we have here in Colombia generally? Well, yeah, for sure. There are some places that I've been to and I'd say, wow, they live so good. And I'm really grateful for the type of living I have here in Colombia because I'm, pri I'm privileged. But not every single person can say that. In Colombia, it's actually a rough country, but it's amazing. So, yeah, in fact, the U.S., I mean, people in the U.S., I think they have a really great living. I can generalize, but they do, most of them. Um, in other countries, maybe it's much more, much more difficult than Colombia. But yeah, it depends on the region and all the stuff and also how they live, the type of money they use. I mean, if we go to the U.S. right now, for us, it's going to be hard because Colombia peso, it's different as dollars. So I think that also varies and, and has like a difference. Do you consider yourself a feminist? No, I don't. I mean, I love women, I love men, both on the same level. I'm not a feminist at all. What do you disagree with? I don't know. I, I think the aspect, just the word of feminist, it's like violence. I don't know. I refer it to violence because they're all the time panel pot busted in, in the streets. I just don't agree with that at all. I mean, everyone has their own um, religious thinking, um, I don't know, cultural thinking. And it's okay, and we just have to respect that. But, I mean, I do support women in their rights and all those stuff, but not with violence. And most of feminist people, I don't say everyone, but, like, all the time have, like, violence um, aspects in you know, type of activities. So I don't refer to that. But I do support women, rights, and you know, all those stuff. In the university that you go to, are angry feminists very common? Well, not angry feminists are common, but there are feminists that have gone to protests um, away or that sometimes come with those protests in the university, not at that high level because they're not allowed. But also there are some, I don't know, so common, some comments, comments that they appear and they're like, it's not the space to talk about it. So yeah, I, I don't relate to them that much. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a conservative person? Also no. Um, I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm so like free and liberal. I don't like to, to think about politics. I actually don't know anything about political aspects. And I just live my life, you know, I'm, I'm really cultural people person I'm, I'm also like in cultural aspects i don't say anything to no one i don't fight i don't do anything so i'm just living i can't refer to myself as something because i'm just in within the culture within life yeah does religion play any role in your thinking well religion religious plays play a, a role in my thinking but not that hard um, in the past years, I was a really religious person. All my life, my family has been a Catholic, um, a religious person. But in fact, right now, I'm so concentrated in my projects that I've taken a little bit away the religious part of my life. I'm also a Catholic, but I don't practice it right, right now that much hard as years before. So, yeah, I mean, I do practice my, my Catholic religious, but not as the hardest years ago. So it, it refers to my thinking, but with not that, like the potential as maybe years away. Are you heterosexual? What do you look for in a man? Hmm. Well, first of all, I see a lot of their personality. I mean, I like a man which is kind, which is crazy as me <laughs> because I'm really crazy. I do a bunch of stuff 
and like a man that also accepts me the way I am, which for sure it's one of the probably the most important aspects in my thinking. Um, I like a really funny guy that makes me laugh all the time because I laugh for sure for everything. Uh, that also handles every situation the correct way. That it's not loud, that it has no violence, that it can relate to every single person without any like specific um, aspects that can handle any situation in every single part. And for sure that my parents and my family agree they he can be in my life. Also, like physical, I like tall boys. I'm rather tiny. I'm like 160, so I like tall boys. Um, and just like they look cool for me. I don't know. I don't like determined boys. Just if I get in love with one, I'll tell you guys. <laughs> so if you're 1.60 yeah. meters, what is the minimum height you would like for him to be? Well, my past boyfriend, I think he was like 173. So I think that's cool. That's great. I don't like a, I don't have like any specific height. So it has to be like this. No, but just him to be tall. It's good. What you said before about getting your family's approval yeah. of a man that's in your life. Is that a common thing here in Cali? Well, it is. It actually it is. The approval of the family, it's really important. I mean, within my, I don't know, my surroundings, I see it a lot. It's really common. Right now, my sister has a boyfriend. They're starting like a relationship. So it's just 16 years old. And for sure, it has to be like a family approval because she is really small. My relationship, I started when I was 19. I was small, but not that small as my sister. And it's common to see an approval. I mean, you're a part of your family and he's going to come up also into that, that family that it's already like constructed. So it's really important and not in every single family. Some of them maybe are like, okay, it's your life and it's your boyfriend, just have fun and do whatever you want. But in my surroundings, it's really common to see that family approval for a boyfriend or something. Does this have anything to do with the estrato? I think it does. Mm, I can generalize, but it does. My estrato always sees like who's coming up into the family. How is the boy? How's the family? How's his surroundings and all those stuff. So I think it really does. It, it relates to that. So, so if a man, a foreign man comes here, let's say a guy from the U.S. or England, and he hopes to live here and settle down in, in Cali, does him being a foreign man give him some additional status or advantages trying to meet the local women here? Okay. Yeah, it gives them probably a higher status or like, yeah, cultural thinking for a woman here in Colombia, not just in Cali, but in Colombia, generally in Colombia, because we also like, um, like to hang out with other people, foreign people, just because of the, the opportunities they can offer us. Um, we probably later on can go and live in a foreign country and that's probably a great opportunity for us, so it does. And just in fact, if we stay here, I mean, it's great to be with a foreign person. How much would a man have to earn for you to say, oh, that's a good salary? I don't know how a salary. I mean, I think that, like, gets into a second place. I, know, I don't know why I first see the person, how he is, how he's with me, with the rest of the people, the salary, it's something that comes afterwards. I, I don't see it. And I will have like a, uh, I don't know, like a, yeah, like something determined. I, I don't know. It won't be important for me. What about just for being able to afford a comfortable life here? The salary? Yeah. Actually, into numbers, and I'm not into that, so I don't know actually how many numbers they can have in order to afford something here, but just live good. 
if I tell you that a woman at your age, 21, has had sex with 10 men, what's your response to that? I mean, it's her choice. It's her life. I don't judge. But for me, it's too much. Like, yeah, I, I don't get into that. Um, I'm a reserved person in sexual terms, so I won't have sex with anyone. And for me, 10 right now, it's a lot. So, I mean, it's her choice. It's her life. It's okay. But I wouldn't be um, agreeing with that. Do you have any friends in your circle that do OnlyFans or cam work? I know two girls which are only fans or do all the fans, but I don't relate to them. Well, I mean, if I see them on the streets, I say hi for sure. I'm not that type of person just like to go by and all the stuff, but I don't relate that much to them. In fact, I, I don't have any problem, but it's not my personal case, you know? It's her life and she'll do it. I don't know, but yeah, it's not my case. Where can men go? meet more conservative women yeah. social like behaviorally conservative i mean nowadays it's hard i mean oh i don't know i'm not conservative but you know i handle myself and i know where i am and um i'm a really good girl actually but nowadays it's not easy to find those type of women. I think you just have to get to know your people and analyze. Um, I don't want to get into this, but probably the status, it's also like a, a good point. Um, not in every single case, but if you get into the high status, it's probably you can find much more like women of this type, but not in, sing in every single case, because I also see some problems with that. And in my, in my, in my surroundings, it's really common also to see like a variety. So yeah, it's not hot. It's not easy. It's actually hot, but you can, you wait, <laughs> you have to just look for her. Is the Spanish going to help? Yeah, for sure. It's going to help. It's not like in a specific point, but I may learn Colombia, not every single person um, speaks English or any other language. So it does help. Uh, but it also depends on the on the type of surroundings you're going to have. Okay, Alejandra, thank you for coming. You've been an interesting guest. I'll leave uh, your contact information for those guys who are interested in the <laughs> dance. Uh, yeah, for sure. For any, any, anything I can help, don't doubt on um, writing to me, texting to me. It's going to be I, I on my Instagram here. Also, if you want to donate something for Missing Universe Columbia, I'm going to be really open for it. It's going to be an incredible um, aspect and it would be an honor for me to receive those economical support and anything you want. Um, I'll be glad to help you guys. One final question is, would you recommend people come here to live? For sure. I mean, Cali, Colombia, Popadan, every single city of Colombia, it's amazing. Each city has its own thing. And that's what makes diversity in the cultural living here in Colombia so great because every single city um, has something to give you that it's different from the rest of them. So it's incredible. You will for sure learn so many things. People here are incredibly gentle. They're funny. They're happy. We're all the time really, really fun. So I think you'll like it. And for sure, just select correctly the city you're going. Um, depending on their cultural aspects, the way of living, the cost of living, if it's cold or hot, because it, that also that's also a really important aspect, depending on the country you, you come from. And also, if you want a chaotic city like Bogota, probably, which is much more crazy, or a calmer city as Popajan, that it's really small. So yeah, it just depends on what you want. And yeah, just coming here, it's incredible. Colombia, it's amazing. Okay. Uh, I don't have any more questions. Is there any suggestions, recommendations, or advice, or something you would like to say to my audience before we sign off? Well, just select correctly if you're coming to Colombia, um, the city you want to come to visit or stay, because that's really important. 
if you have a bad experience with the city, then I assume you'll say Colombia is terrible, but it's not terrible. It's actually really fun and it's amazing. We have so many things to offer people, but make sure to select correctly where you want to come because as I said before, each city, um, it's really different from the rest. So that's a really important um, aspect to touch. And for sure, as I said before, if you want to cooperate with Miss Universe Colombia, I will really be glad to, to receive those donations and economical support because it's really important right now. <laughs> and thank you guys for hearing me. Thank you, Jen, for inviting me to the program. I'm really glad and it was just an amazing, incredible time here. Thank you. Bye-bye. For those of you who have never traveled to Colombia before because of safety concerns, the entire Colombia safety course is now available on Subscribestar. Check it out in the link in the description below. If any of you folks need some help with planning your life or with organizing a trip, email Say and Chan at ProtonMail.com to inquire about a session with Say and Chan Life Coaching and Consulting. Everyone else, if you would like to support me and my work, please consider doing so on Subscribestar, Cash App, PayPal, YouTube memberships, or Super Thanks, all links in the description below. Everyone else, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. This is Saiyan Chan signing off, reminding us all to always cogitate and analyze.